Right, so moving on this week. So our first story this week, as you probably realised, um, Fallout 4 um, was actually released. Was it last week Fallout 4 came out on Thursday? Am I right? Uh, it came out Tuesday, I believe. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Fallout 4 came out Tuesday last week. Um, and then we thought we'd give a, sort of a bit of an overview of sort of how the game is. Um, and one of the main things, I think, initially is, uh, you know, war... One of the opening lines is, is that war never changes. And um, after playing Fallout for a bit, I think we can sort of safely say that Bethesda games don't generally change that much. Um, just a, a point there. That line, like almost every reviewer has used to say, like Bethesda games never changes, never change as well. And it's just like getting a bit old, and annoying. But I thought I'd use it as well, just because like everyone else is, and it, and it is a bit the same. But um, yeah, while we were away last week, it, it fortunately coincided with the release of Fallout 4. So um, and Fallout 4 is developed by Bethesda Game Studios, and it's published by Bethesda Softworks. Um, as you probably already know, it's the fifth major installment in the series. And uh, sort of follows a very similar game style to Fallout 3. Um, New Vegas wasn't developed by Bethesda; it was developed by um, Obsidian Entertainment, and that came out in between those last two games. Uh, a few stats about it: so, in its first 24 hours, uh, Fallout 4 sold 1.2 million copies on Steam and had almost 470,000 concurrent players online on the day of launch, which um, actually broke the record held um, for the most concurrent players of a non-Valve game. Does anyone want to have a guess who the record was before? Call of Duty. Uh, uh, G2, uh, yeah, going for Fortos PC release would be my guess, but... Grand Theft Auto, yeah, it was Grand Theft Auto 5, which had 360,000 uh, players on before it. Um, do you know what the top game is for the most concurrent players? Include, so it's going to be a Valve game. Counter-Strike, probably, or Left 4 Dead. Dota 2. Dota TF2. 2. Yeah, yeah, Dota 2 on launch had over a million concurrent players at once. Wow. And, um, yeah, that is the most played game on Steam at the moment, which is crazy. Or the most concurrently played game on Steam, which is pretty mad. Um, so to date, I've only sunk in about eight hours into Fallout 4, um, which I spent mostly through yesterday. I know, Jack, you spent a lot more time in it than me. Uh, like, what level are you now? How long have you played it for? Uh, I've played it for 65 hours. I'm level 43. I actually had to take a break for two days because I had stuff to do and I had stopped doing everything before that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it's an amazing game. Uh, I agree that obviously not much has changed from the previous games, but I'm loving, I'm just loving it. Yeah, that's good. And I think, I think a lot of um, a lot of my first impressions of the game is, is it was actually, I think I've been quite surprised how drawn in I've actually been. Mm. Um, like mainly because like when I played the first, I mean I didn't, I enjoyed Fallout Three a bit, but with Fallout 4 now, it just seems they've got some of its shit right. Um, a lot of the reviews I'm seeing um, from people are saying that they're saying, oh, you know, they're criticizing certain elements of the game, but generally they're saying we couldn't put it down, we couldn't play, uh, we couldn't stop playing. And a lot of the reviews don't really give a very good reason why they couldn't stop playing. But for me, I think the reason is um, it's the atmosphere and the characters. I um, mean, you know, the art style, you know, isn't, you know, it isn't top notch, but it isn't distracting. It fits the style of the game really well. And um, for me, I think the whole sort of presence and the feeling of when you're playing the game, there's lots of, um, you know, every side mission you do has big structure. It's almost like trees where you're, like, branching off into lots of different missions. You know, everything feels very contextual and, like, you're really affecting the environment which, which you're playing in. And for me, that's... I don't think many games do that. I think it does it a lot better than Skyrim did. And um, for me, that's sort of, like, what really struck out for me, as well as well as just my initial impressions of it for the first eight hours, the, the ambient soundtrack by, uh, by Inam Jura, I think he's called. He did the music for uh, one of the other Fallout games and for Dragon Age 2. And, um, yeah, just playing through it, all of it is just so just so epic. Jack, so, um, yeah, Jack, what are your thoughts initially from playing it? Well, a lot of what you just said I'd agree with. Uh, I think yeah. the soundtrack is a huge part of how good the game is. Um, Particularly my favourite is when you get to Diamond City. It's this one soundtrack that plays. It's so haunting and beautiful. And um, I think the art style is actually like one of the strongest parts of the game. Like I agree that like the textures and the animations aren't as good as they could be. But I think the the sort of personality that the aesthetic of the game has is really vibrant and unique. And um, and I just love like so you feel like you are actually roaming a wasteland in this new game. There's loads going on. And you have all these different weather effects and stuff which add all this sort of... It, it feels really different. So if you're in the fog and you can't see 10 feet in front of you or if then there's like a, a radiation storm. Um, and I love the sort of dark humour of it. 
I thought that's what Fallout's always nailed is that he puts you in these awful, horrible situations and then somehow makes you laugh about it. Um, there's this little robot who I met called, uh, what was his name, Professor Goodfields or something? <laughs> my best friend now. <laughs> I know. He walks around saying, whoa. <laughs> I think it's good because I because I really enjoyed the game. I think a lot of people are enjoying it. If you look at the chat now, so Casper GR is saying that uh, um, he thinks Fallout 4 is lame, the most boring game he's played. Um, a lot of people are saying that it's not that good of a game. And for me, I was, I mean, after playing it, now I'm quite surprised by a lot of it. Um, so Metacritic um, from professional reviewers gave this game a score of 85, um, but the average rating for players is actually only is only 5.3 out of 10. Um, which is quite interesting. So out of that breakdown, you've got 639 positive reviews, 206 mixed reviews, and then 857 negative reviews. Um, so, I mean, with, with the numbers, you know, there's obviously a lot of people playing Fallout 4, but um, what I thought would be quite interesting to talk about was sort of the shortcomings of the game as well. So, you know, obviously everyone's enjoying it quite well, but people are still getting quite sort of nitty, nitpicky even with a lot of the smaller details of it because it is such a huge and expansive game. I imagine there's always going to be some problems with it. Um, as far as bugs go, I mean, I haven't really encountered many I've things. I've seen so games. many. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? I mean, honestly, though, like, when I say so many, I so many for your average game, but every Bethesda game I have played has been absolutely mental with bugs because of how many systems are interacting constantly. Um, and... I haven't encountered anything game-breaking as such, so it depends how you're looking at it. For, for an, your average AAA game, it's really buggy. For a Bethesda game, it's actually quite good. <laughs> and what, what have been your main shortcomings of Fallout 4? I mean, you, I, I imagine you, out of 10, or I think it's quite bad to give games ratings out of 10 because it's sort of, you, you can't really say exactly how good something is. But I guess you, 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 you're, you're fairly positive about the game. You enjoy playing it. Um, yeah, I mean, I need to give it a lot more time because Fallout New Vegas I've put hundreds of hours into, so... Uh, a lot of a Fallout game to me comes down to how long it lasts and how long you can stay in that world. But so far, yeah, I'll put it at the top of the scale. It's uh, really good. I think all the negative aspects of the game have at no point impacted my ability to play and enjoy it. And I've just, yeah, like the gunplay, like what, what matters to me is like the feel of the game. So the gunplay feels nice. The guns feel nice. The sound, they sound good. Um, the AI and the enemies is a lot better than it's been in Bethesda games. Still not great, but yeah. yeah. So if you were going to pick like three things that sort of mm. they maybe could have spent a bit more time on, and that so we've got the first patch coming out for Fallout 4, which is coming out next week. If there were sort of three to four things that you'd like them to fix, um, what would those be for you? Uh, animations probably at the top. I mean, I know it doesn't matter to the core gameplay experience, but I just think for a triple A title, it'd be nice to see because I don't really go in third person because. When as soon as I do that, the game seems to drop in quality and the way it looks and feels. Whereas in the first person, it's a lot more realistic, I guess. Um, and you know the way your companions will path and clip into things and stuff, uh, it looks a bit wonky. And the way that people walk around holding guns is very stiff. They sort of walk around like this, and it's just like, um, yeah. And then second would probably be. Uh, I'd say the UI. I know it's, again, small, but it looks quite shitty almost, like it looks quite cheap. I think they could have just made it look a bit more professional. Uh, I don't think that would have been difficult. And then number three, I'd say they should have created more enemy types than, like, because I feel like this is more of a Bethesda game, like, compared to New Vegas, like, the enemies all felt very unique to the areas. Here they kind of use archetypes, so it that kind of takes away when you sort of go to an area and you're like, oh, it's this type of enemy here. Um, whereas in New Vegas, I felt that the enemies that you encountered were, yeah, they're all humans or whatever, but they're the humans from here instead of just Raider number 75 or, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I agree with you on some of the animations and parts. I mean, definitely when you're getting into elevators or lifts, yeah. so... And, uh, and people like, just teleport next to you. They just appear next to you. That is kind of weird. But it's nothing. there's nothing really immersion-breaking, uh, I no, think. No, definitely not. Um, again, the interface. So, yeah, and I'm selecting my weapons around, just trying to get everything working. That does get a bit um, a bit cumbersome, I think, or I feel sometimes um, with it. When I'm trying to work out what guns have ammo in, what have not, like, that ammo counter doesn't stay in the same position when I'm scrolling up and down because, like, the guns get different stats added, which makes it really difficult for me to just, like, quickly 
flip over. Um, I'm also so I use I use the Pit Boy app. I don't know if you use it on my phone. So I have the app right in front of me as I'm playing through the game. And um, one of the things for me is I feel the really game really lacks a mini map because with my app open and just like next to you, I'm literally looking where I'm going all the time. And uh, now I've got so used to it, uh, I can't really play without a mini map now. And uh, I don't know if that's a criticism. I think it'd be nice to have it on the screen, though. I think it does add a lot to it, because I literally do have no idea where I'm going. Well, it is computer. on your wrist as well, so you do feel that if you had the map up there, you could just sort of glance down without constantly stopping. And I think that actually brings up a point that I'd probably put in my top three if I could choose again, be the new user experience is dog shit. Like, it, it doesn't tell you how to use the game. Um, it doesn't explain that. Like, so obviously, if you know Fallout, it's not a problem. But I was just pressing random keys when I started, being like, "What does this do? What does this do?" Um, and then the base building as well. It's like, "Oh, build um a, an antenna," and you're like, "Cool." It's like, "Attach it to the uh, generator." You're like, "Cool." It doesn't tell you how, how. And if you look through the UI, you you find it eventually. I just think that little dialogue should pop up saying press this key or look at this area of the HUD to see that you can use that functionality because it took me far longer to work a lot of things out than I think yeah. should have happened. So, so I guess in summary then really, I mean Fallout is a fantastic game. Um, I mean as a, as a collective group everything is great, you know the story works really well, the graphics and the atmosphere work, but the problem, um, I mean the problem people seem to be having with it is sort of nitpicking specific details about the game which don't work well and um, which might be patched um, Coming in, coming next week with a new patch coming out, but um, and I mean, it's all we've got to do is wait and see really when that comes through. And uh, you know, generally, I'm having a good time with it. I think most people are as well. So yeah, we'll see how that goes next week. And Tom and Rob, you've not played it, have you yet? No, not yet. No, no. I'm planning on playing it at all. I definitely will. I yeah. probably will eventually when it goes in some form of sale. Like I said previously, I'm yep. not the biggest fan of the Fallout games to begin with. I yeah. understand that they're very good games. They're just not my sort of thing. But the base building looks fun, but I'm not paying like 40 to 50 quid uh, to have a base building simulator. No. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Hmm. 